Hello, my name is Christine Osorio, and I'm the proud superintendent of District 622. Today we're here to talk to you about the plans underway for the design and development of a new elementary school to be built on the Maplewood Middle School property. Originally, we were supposed to be meeting in person with you. We had intended to hold a neighborhood community meeting. Unfortunately, with the current COVID crisis and social distancing guidelines in place, we've had to resort to a video format instead. At the end of today's presentation, you'll see some instructions about how you can send in your feedback, comments, questions, and thoughts. And we sure hope to hear from you because your input is truly important to us in this process. Again, I want to reiterate, this is not going to be the only time that you will hear from us during this construction period. We intend to communicate with you throughout. Finally, as we get started today, I just want to thank you for your community support as we begin all of the reconstruction of school buildings throughout District 622. Without this community support, we would never be able to begin this work. And truly, I want to say that this deeply important work is going to change the educational experience of our learners for generations to come. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate you. So let's take a look at what's going to be happening over the next couple of years at the Maplewood Middle School site. As you know, the current middle school is gonna eventually be taken down and a new elementary school will be taking its place. The construction of the new elementary school will be happening right alongside the current Maplewood Middle School while there are students inside of that building. And eventually that transition to the new building will open up in the fall of 22. So let's take a look at the timeline between now and then. Before we do so, I'd like to just take a look back at why we are doing this. As we discussed last year during our conversations about our facilities bond referendum, we talked about why our elementary schools are not working for our current programming. Our elementary schools are simply just not designed for the way we do school in today's modern era. All of our schools were built in an era when basically all that was needed back then was 20 classrooms and a principal's office. Today, our schools provide many different services for students and families. Small classrooms and office spaces are needed for many supports, such as academic and behavior intervention, special education services, social work, and ESL classes, to name a few. Because our buildings weren't designed to support this level of programming, school staff have had to be very creative. Spaces that were never intended to house students have had to be converted into instructional spaces. These have included things like storage closets, empty shower stalls, and in a couple of locations, even bathrooms and an electrical closet. This challenge was a big part of what drove our decision to take our referendum request to our community for support. And for that, we are so grateful that we have this opportunity to move forward. So let's take a look at what the facilities bond project goals were. When we went out last year and communicated with our, our constituents and taxpayers about this, we have four key goals, safety, security, healthy spaces, and innovative environments. As you may recall, our plan is to consolidate from 14 schools into 11 new and or renovated schools. Every new school will have a secure entrance, and that means a modern entrance with extra security so that we can monitor anyone who is coming and going from the school. All sites will have modern furniture and flexible classroom spaces for independent small group and large group learning. We want to improve energy efficiency for our sites. And you may recall that the schools we are currently renovating and expanding are five schools, Carver, John Glenn, Skyview, Tartan, and North. You may recall we also have already renovated two sites, Richardson and Castle, but those were funded prior to our facilities bond passing. We are building two new elementary schools. We're, renov we're building a new Eagle Point on its same site, and we are building a new elementary school at this Maplewood Middle School site. And we will be closing or repurposing some schools. Oakdale Elementary will close, Webster Elementary will close, and Maplewood Middle School, of course, will close because we're putting a new elementary at that site. Skyview Elementary, that side of the building will no longer be an elementary because the rest of the building, uh, the entire building will be taken over as a middle school. Here's a look at the overall district construction timeline. You may recall last year, 2018-19, we had some facilities planning, our stakeholder input, and ultimately in May, our facilities bond referendum passed. This current school year, a lot of time has been spent in architectural drawings completed for middle schools and Carver, and construction is already beginning on those projects this spring. In 2021, the construction for those projects will continue. Our new elementary schools will be designed and they'll be out for, out, put out for bid, which means that companies will be bidding, construction companies will be bidding on those projects. We're also gonna be doing our boundary study, which is gonna look at what our new elementary and middle school boundaries will look like. 
And we're doing some demographic studies with that as well. And the design work will ultimately begin for our new high school renovations as well. Construction will continue for the 21-22 school year for those new elementary sites and middle school renovations. And that high school construction will begin. As I mentioned previously, the fall of 22 is when the new boundaries will take place and students will take ownership of those new middle and elementary sites. Those new boundaries will take effect that year and high school construction will continue. High school construction will continue into that 23-24 school year. We hope to have those wrapped up by about the end of the 2023-24 school year. Let's talk about some commitments that we have made during this process. Most importantly, transparency and communication. We want our community to know each and every step of the way where those taxpayer dollars are going. We want to model fiscal transparency and, uh, and responsibility throughout the entire construction process. We have ensured that every project we put out to bid does not come back over budget. If it does, we've made commitments to send it back to the drawing board and have it revised. Where there are places where we can save money, we have done so. And if ever there's a need for a project to be put on a different timeline, just so that we can make sure it stays within budget, we're willing to do so. We're very, very committed to keeping all of our projects on budget. Uh, so that we can be able to accomplish all the goals that we have set out in this broad plan. We also want to be very supportive for all of our staff who will be changing buildings. This is a very traumatic time. It's an exciting time, but it can be traumatic for folks who've been in one building for a very long time. There's many connections that exist there. The same is true for our families. Um, we've got a lot of plans in place, and we're already working with our parent groups um, to make sure we build strong connections well ahead of the transition years so that we can build bridges together with our communities that exist in different sites. We want to make sure that whenever new students and families transition to different sites, they are welcomed with open arms and we have some ability to merge together the leadership experiences that have been existing in different buildings. And we also want to make sure we have staff and community input during each and every phase of our planning. We've had a lot of work groups already with many of our teachers and folks in, having input along the way. This was supposed to be a neighborhood meeting um, where we would be talking to you as neighborhood members and community members about this plan. Um, right now we're doing this virtually, but we will have other opportunities as well. And we sure hope you're going to share your feedback with us as you get this first glimpse of the plan. And finally, I want to mention that we are going to work really hard to maintain our 622 history and legacy. There are many, many, many stories in uh, history behind each of these buildings. The elimination of Maplewood Middle School is a really serious thing to consider, and we want to ensure that we are keeping track of all of those stories and mementos and history behind that. So we are going to take an effort to collect stories, anecdotes, and artifacts. And our goal is actually to build somewhat of an online museum or some place where we can archive history and stories. So please be looking for opportunities to share those opportunities and stories along the way as well. Next, I'd like to just share a little bit of a timeline for this elementary school that's being developed. Um, as you know, we are in design stages right now for the new elementary school. Winter of 19 and spring of 20, we're already beginning those design stages and you're gonna actually have an opportunity today to get a look at what some of those designs are gonna look like. This summer of 2020, we're gonna be putting some of those projects out for bid. And when we put a project out for bid, you don't put an entire building out for bid for one thing, you bid out different elements of the construction project. So that's something that's gonna be happening this summer. Now, this new elementary school at the Maplewood Middle School site, many people have said, well, isn't it just gonna be called Maplewood Elementary School? Not necessarily. We have a board policy and past practice for how we name schools. And so we are gonna go through a process this fall where we're gonna collect community input and staff input and student input and gather ideas for what the new name might be for this elementary school at the Maplewood site. Because very soon we'd like to be able to attach a new name to this building. So that's gonna be an exciting part of the process as well. So that will happen this fall of 2020. Also, construction will begin on this project. So please be looking for groundbreaking ceremonies and opportunities for that as well. In winter of 2021, construction will begin, or uh, the construction will begin this fall with construction completing by winter of 2021. One of the wonderful things about building a new school that students are not actually in is that construction can take place year round. 
When you are doing construction renovation, when students are inside of a building, you have to really work around how to stage that process, where you're going to have students in, what parts of the building students will be in, what parts of the building you do construction in. And so it really is important to plan that thoughtfully, and you have to really plan many much more time for a building construction project that students are physically in. But this is a project that's going to take place uh, separately, and so it can go much quick, much more quickly, and it can take place during all uh, seasons of the year, which is really exciting. And as I mentioned earlier, fall of 2022 is when we'll have students in the new building. With this, I want to just let you know that uh, we have a place where you can follow along with all of our construction at uh, on our district website, www.isc622.org slash construction. And you can always submit any questions to communications at isc622.org. And this is true not only for this project, but for all of our construction projects that we have going on throughout the district. And we do hope you'll check out those sites because we have photographs every step of the way for each project that's underway and also videos for many of the projects that are underway as well. So it's a great site to check out, not only one time, but periodically throughout the way because it's always changing. Um, at this point, I'm actually gonna be handing this presentation over to Sal Bagley. She is from our design team at Wold Architects, and she's actually going to walk through with you the entire design process, the timeline, and get really into specifics about what this new elementary school is going to look like at the Maplewood site. And so I look forward to handing it over to Sal to give you many, many more of the details. Thank you so much for your time today. We are excited to share with you the planning process and schedule, project scope, floor plan, three-dimensional renderings, proposed materials, and site plan for the new elementary school on the Maplewood site with you today. The planning process for the project, which was done collaboratively for both the new elementary schools at Eagle Point and Maplewood sites, has been designed to maximize stakeholder involvement and participation. Here you can see the names of the design phases and the key outcomes of each phase. During schematic design, we work with a group of representative stakeholders that we call the core planning group, who co-create the building floor plan with us through discussion of important relationships, taking tours of similar facilities, both digitally and in person, and considering how the building operates today, as well as what might happen in the future to keep a perspective on long-term goals. After this process, we move into what is called design development, which is when more detailed engineering occurs and the design is explored more deeply in 3D. We also include more users at this time to get the detailed requirements of each type of space right in an engagement process that we call user groups. We'll show some examples in a few slides. Finally, after all of this input is received and processed, we move into the construction documents phase, where we create drawings that will be publicly bid off by contractors. Both elementary school projects are currently in this phase. After these drawings are complete, the projects will be bid, awarded, and construction can start. Both new elementary schools are designed to be approximately 112,000 square feet, including space for six kindergarten classrooms and five classrooms each for grades one through five. Each building will also include space for four preschool classrooms and specialized spaces for special education, music, STEM, and PE. These projects have followed a parallel design process as they are intended to have identical space relationships while having unique identities through color palette and material usage. We worked with the core planning group from October through December 2019 into schematic design and design development wrapped up around the end of February. We've been in the construction documents phase for about a month and the drawings will be completed at the end of May and early June for bidding. The intent is to receive bids mid-summer and then construction can start. The contractors will begin work on the building, which will be built on the same site as current Maplewood Middle School from fall 2020 through the anticipated completion of the building in spring 2022. Once school is out for the summer in 2022, the existing Maplewood building can be demolished to complete the play fields, playground, parking lots, and other site features. As we mentioned before, the core planning group helped create the building floor plan through conversation about critical space relationships and priorities of the design. We capture these conversations into statements that we call guiding principles and design criteria. We'll review the highlights of these on the next several slides. Guiding principles are subjective statements that are agreed upon by the core planning group regarding the philosophy and big picture goal of the building. Key principles for this project include being safe and secure while also being welcoming and inviting, allowing each building to have its own unique identity, and to maximize opportunities for natural daylight throughout. 
The core planning group also spent a great deal of time discussing how to create a variety of learning spaces to support flexibility, adaptability, and student choice, while keeping a close eye on how the buildings could be master planned for any future needed growth. The following floor sides reflect the design criteria, which are objective statements regarding critical space relationships and features. The core planning group prioritized accessibility throughout the facility, as well as spent a lot of time considering how users of the building will flow throughout the day, considering efficiency. The classroom areas will be in pods that include two grade levels with flexible collaborative areas throughout. The classrooms will include operable doors that allow for learners to expand into these collaborative areas as well as allow for supervision from inside the classrooms into these areas. The media center will play a key role in the building and is located for maximum use at the heart of the building. On this side, slide, you can see the final floor plans for the building. On the right-hand side of the slide are, is the main level of the building and the second floor can be seen on the left-hand side. These are color-coded by space type. The main office can be seen in a tan color right to the right of the main entry including a vestibule for security. Once inside the building, the media center is located to serve as a living room for the building and is central to both classroom wings. Grades K-1 share this community and specialized spaces for STEM, special education, and pre-K share the opposite community. There is a dedicated entry for pre-K to accommodate the transition midday for AM and PM preschool. Above the K-1 community is the grades 2-3 community and finally, the grades four or five community will be located above pre-K. Spaces that will be used for events and by the community heavily are located on the right-hand side of the plan, including the cafeteria and the gymnasium. The music classrooms are also located on this side of the building for acoustic considerations, as well as to distribute the specialist rooms for good traffic flow. Directly across from the main entrance is the bus entrance, which will provide for students to enter the same common lobby living room space, whether they arrive by car, by bus, or if they walk or bike. Here's that same floor plan with the color tone removed. The user group meetings to review detailed needs by space type were held over the course of several rounds of meetings where participants could provide feedback and revised drawings were reviewed at the next meeting. These happened from December 2019 through February 2020 and the drawings on this slide and the following slides show the results of these meetings, including storage requirements, marker attack board locations, where windows or doors are in the spaces, and even light switch and power locations. The three-dimensional qualities of these spaces are also reviewed in these meetings. Now we will get to computer-generated renderings of what both the inside and outside of the building will look like. The building is planned to use a variety of um, two tones of brick as well as metal panel and precast on the gymnasium. This is a view of the main entry taken from the parent drop-off. There will be a canopy with signage to make the main entry intuitive to find, with the main office being the volume to the right of that canopy and the two-story classroom being the volume on the left. The building will utilize that mix of brick and metal panel and glass to create visual interest in a timeless color palette. Here's that same view from, taken from farther back in the parking lot. The music rooms can now be seen on the far right-hand side of the image and the dedicated pre-K door can be seen on the left as a part of the classroom volume on the first floor. Across the main lobby from the main entrance is the bus entry, which can be seen in this view. The classrooms are now seen on the right-hand side of the image and the cafeteria, which is a tall space, can be seen on the left. Overall, much of the building will be stacked in two stories, except on top of volumes like the cafeteria and gymnasium, which are tall. The next several slides show computer-generated renderings of what the interior of the building will look like. The color palette utilizes both neutral and vibrant materials, and the vibrant materials are planned to be used selectively in materials that are easy to change in the future, like paint. This is a view from right inside the main door after you've come through the secure vestibule. The bus entry is right in front of you, and the media center and access to the classroom communities are on the left. This space will include lots of natural daylight. Here is a view of the presentation area in the media center. And here is the open reading area, which is along the windows of the media center. Now we have entered one of the two grade level communities showing classrooms around the perimeter of the flexible learning area. 
You can also see the operable glass walls that allow for both supervision as well as for classes to expand to utilize this space for individual, small, and large group activities. Each community includes small group rooms for services, group work, or conferences and meetings. These spaces are designed with adaptability, connectivity, and flexibility in mind. Finally, the cafeteria will have an entire wall of windows for maximizing natural daylight, as well as acoustic treatments on both the ceiling and the walls. On this slide, you can see a diagram of the site. We've included an existing aerial photo on the left and the proposed site layout on the right. The existing building can be seen in the gray tone in the image on the right. The new building will be located so that the existing building can remain operational during construction. Another critical value of the design is to separate car and bus traffic. This can be seen with the parent drop-off loop that is at the front of the building, along with all of the parking for the building. Only the buses will be able to get to the bus loop area at the back, which will also include striping for use as a hard surface play area recess. The site will also include green space fields and play areas. Greetings, I'm Randy Anderson, Director of Business Services for School District 622. I will be overseeing this school construction project. I hope that you enjoyed the preview of this exciting project. We greatly appreciate the support of our district stakeholders making this project a reality for our students and community members. If you have any questions or would like to discuss the project, please feel free to give me a call at 651-748-7511 or email me at randerson, and that's O-N, at isd622.org. Thanks for watching.